We're here in the flat tops and looking at some early season snowpack. Uh, we're just on a little cut bank on a north facing slope. And uh, what we're finding here is pretty much the same snowpack I found um, probably 100 miles away in Breckenridge the other day. Uh, new snow, uh, kind of a bit of a crust, and then really weak snow underneath. Um, so right now, um, looking at these areas, avalanche conditions, we're, there's not much of a worry. If you were to go up high and find some uh, wind-loaded north-facing slope and you put a slab on top of this, you might have a problem. But right now, we're just looking at the future, and the future doesn't look great. So we have sugary snow underneath, really weak snow, and it seems to be really widespread, um, not just in the flat tops, but uh, really across the northern mountains. So it's something we'll keep an eye on. One more thing to look out for, um, we have this nice low density snow on top. We have a dry weather forecast, so we could have a potentially another layer. Really too early to tell um, what's gonna happen yet, but we'll be keeping an eye on these weak layers. And um, when we have new snow, we'll give you another update. There were two avalanches triggered in November in and near the Vail and Summit County zone. These avalanches occurred near the Continental Divide, which has been favored by recent storms. Northern mountain areas near the divide are areas where there's enough recent snow from the last few storms to form a slab, and there's also older and weaker snow underneath. This slab weak layer combination is mostly found on shady slopes in these areas. Although these avalanche conditions are isolated, they're a good indicator of what will happen in the future when a storm loads this snowpack structure.